Why is everyone switching to DaVinci Resolve? I asked myself that same question and I thought, what the heck, might as well try it. It's free for the light version. So I downloaded it and boy, was I blown away. The sense of control I felt as I dove into the software, separate pages for separate tasks, like coloring, editing, even effects. I could even edit keyframes. I was in a whole new world. Now, I didn't just switch to DaVinci Resolve because I switched to PC, which would make sense because you can't use Final Cut Pro on PC, but DaVinci was actually the final nail in the coffin for me in switching on over to PC in the first place. So thank you, DaVinci. So today I wanted to share with you five of the main reasons why I switched on over to DaVinci Resolve from Final Cut Pro. Like most of you, I saw other creators switching on over to DaVinci Resolve and it definitely piqued my interest. In my opinion, after a limited time that I've been able to work in DaVinci, it takes the best of both Premiere Pro and Final Cut Pro and sort of puts them together. Like the robust features and track-based editing from Premiere Pro and the more digestible and simple layout from Final Cut Pro. But that's still just a surface of what convinced me to switch on over to DaVinci Resolve. The first reason that got me to switch was better keyframing. And if you use Final Cut Cut Pro at all, you know how horrible the keyframe editing is in Final Cut Pro. But with DaVinci, you have so much more control and can even adjust the easing of the keyframes for a more smoother motion. And this adds a lot more polish to your edits and with anything you're adding motion to. The second reason that convinced me to switch was track-based editing. And this is something that took me a bit to get used to after years in Final Cut Pro's magnetic timeline. But to me, I just feel like track-based editing is that necessary trade-off if you want to have more organization over your timeline. For example, I like to have separate tracks for A-roll, B-roll, titles, and other miscellaneous overlays and effects in my edits. And this allows me to separate them accordingly. And you also can control each track entirely. And this is especially handy with audio. With audio tracks, you can add effects to the entire track versus just adding effects to the clip themselves, making it more efficient and more consistent across your project. The third reason was the professional color grading tools. And I'm in no way a professional colorist, but using a professional color grading software makes color grading a whole lot easier. Once you get over the obvious learning curve, it sort of lifts the ceiling of potential in my color grades as well as just allows me to learn more about color grading in general. And the note system is great once you get used to it and all the tools built into the software just adds so many more levels of control and customization to your color grades. Like the color space transform for example and it allows you to transform your color space from maybe log to rec 709. It also has built-in tracking for objects and masks so you don't have to go in and rotoscope it yourself to adjust individual parts of your image and many more. There's a ton to dive into with the color page alone and that deserves its own separate video. The fourth reason was the effects and the fusion page, which there's still a lot to dive into with fusion that I've yet to uncover, but the effects built into the paid version, like the film look effect, the glow effect, and many more are awesome. And they actually look pretty natural. Like you actually filmed it with maybe a mist filter or film with a film camera. And yes, of course you can get similar plugins in Final Cut Pro, but remember you still have to pay for Final Cut Pro and then pay for the effects on top of that. Whereas with DaVinci, it's all built in under one price. And as for the Fusion page, which also deserves its own video, you have things like Magic Mask, which is one of my most favorite tools in DaVinci Resolve. It saves you a ton of time with rotoscoping and is pretty accurate if you want to maybe single something out in an image or throw text behind yourself like this. Of course, you have to fine tune it to get it perfect, but it's way better than doing it manually. So, And the fifth and final point is is you just have more control in general. All of these sort of fall under this category, so consider this a summary, but it's still true. You just have way more control over your projects, and more specifically though, the different pages and different workspaces is sort of what I mean. Each page has its own unique tool and setting for each specific part of the editing process, starting with the media page, and that's for sorting and organizing your project files. Then you have the cut page for quick and dirty edits. This also features their version of the magnetic timeline. Then you have the edit page, which is where you'll probably spend 90% of your time and where the track based editing is. And to be honest, I don't really use the cut page. I spend most of my time in the editing page. Then for effects, you have the fusion page for all of the fusion effects and things like magic mask, then the color page where you color grade your footage and project. And then the fair light page, which is DaVinci's audio editing page. And it's where you will dial in all your audio effects and levels for your project. And then finally the deliver page where you preview and export your project. To me, this just helps my chaotic ADHD brain makes sense of the entire edit. Having them separate really adds intention to each part of the editing process and helps me focus more on the task at hand instead of getting lost trying to do everything on one page, which is simple for sure, but I just feel like DaVinci Resolve crushes Final Cut Pro here. Sometimes complexity 
is better. Another bonus, just like Final Cut Pro, is that DaVinci Resolve has live saving, so you don't have to worry about losing your project or footage if you decide to close out of the program or if your computer crashes. I love this feature personally so much, and it's another reason that convinced me to jump ship. Switching editing softwares is never gonna be easy or perfect. One complaint I had was, whenever I used Final Cut Pro for eight or so years, of course, I accumulated a ton of titles that couldn't transfer over to DaVinci Resolve. But luckily, this video's partner, Motion Array made that a whole lot easier. In the last few years that I've been using Motion Array, I got pretty much all of my titles for Final Cut Pro from there. And guess what? They have a ton of the same titles for DaVinci Resolve as well. Not to mention other great presets for Adobe Premiere Pro as well as Adobe After Effects, as well as thousands of backgrounds, overlays, and effects. They also have a library of sound effects and even royalty-free music. So whether you're a content creator or filmmaker, Motion Array is a solid resource for creative assets. So if you're interested in checking out Motion Array and you want to save $50 off your annual subscription, I went ahead and linked my affiliate link in the description below. If you go through and purchase a subscription, that just helps out me and the channel. Thank you to Motion Array for partnering with me on this video. And now back to the video. Another thing that I feel like could just be a little bit better in DaVinci Resolve that Final Cut Pro does well is a live playhead. And shout out to the dorky dad himself for bringing this up in one of his most recent videos. If you haven't heard of Jake and you love DaVinci Resolve, what are you doing? Go watch him right now. But yeah, a live playhead would be perfect in DaVinci Resolve and make the overall experience just that much better. Lastly, this is probably a stretch, but I wish you could combine the magnetic timeline and the track-based timeline together. I feel like this feature would be amazing for DaVinci Resolve, but probably would make it too good so I can understand why they're holding off on that. So DaVinci is absolutely amazing, but it doesn't make Final Cut Pro obsolete. This is just my preference. Final Cut Pro is still a solid choice for many with its simpler interface and smooth performance. But I just found that DaVinci Resolve gives me a ton more flexibility and control over my editing process. Plus I get to experiment with more professional tools and features allowing me to push my creative boundaries. And it also has every single thing that I personally need in one editing software. And at this point, whether I'm on Mac or PC, I think I'll be staying with DaVinci. Goodbye Final Cut Pro. It's been real. I'll miss you, but Da Vinci has my heart. And honestly, if you're thinking about making the switch yourself, you should definitely try it because the light version is 100% free and you have pretty much all of the features and stuff that you would need in an editing software right there for free. So you might as well give it a shot. And that's how I dipped my toes in before I felt comfortable purchasing the full license. And now 100% of all of my projects are edited in DaVinci Resolve. Let me know in the comments below if you've thought about switching, if you have switched, which one you prefer more. Do you think Premiere Pro is better? Definitely let me know your thoughts in the comments. Thank you guys so much much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.